Home with God, Chapter 18 It is your intention to fully know yourself through your experience, not to partially know yourself. So let me ask you a direct question. This has to do more specifically with life after death. Okay. If we are the internal essence, moving through the singularity that we call space and time, on a continuous and never-ending cycle of the self through the self, how then do we ever experience eternal life with you, with God, as we were promised? Good question. And your answer? This continuous cycle of the self that you describe is the eternal life with me of which you have been told. You are experiencing eternal life with God right now. What then is the rule of death in all of this? And are you saying that this is heaven? Is this ongoing, never-ending cycle as good as it gets? As good as it gets? Do we never experience the oneness with, with, with you of which it has been written? What of that moment of pure bliss? about which the mystics have sung praises when the individual soul is reunited with the all. Before our conversation is over, that moment will be described for you. Your thirst will be quenched. As for your other questions, the movement of the individuality through the singularity never ends but continues in cycles, as has been described. Cycles that occur sequentially, because a cycle is sequential by definition, no? And yet these cycles also occur simultaneously. That is correct. Everything is happening at once, seeming to happen in sequence. You use what you call death as a means of marking the beginning and the end of these sequences and of replenishing yourself between them. Death is an energy shift that produces enormous fluctuations in the rate and frequency of the vibration of your being, propelling you back and forth between what you would call physical and spiritual life. Death is not required, however, for you to move through the space-time continuum and experience yourself at the different level levels. Death is not required. Not if you define death as the dropping away of the physical body. You may have the fullest experience of your spiritual self while remaining with your physical body. It is not necessary to drop away the physical in order to experience that. And you may have the fullest experience of your physical self while journeying within the spiritual realm. I can take my body with me to the spiritual realm. You may indeed. Then why wouldn't I do this always? Why ever die? Remaining with one physical body through all eternity would not serve the purpose of eternity itself. It wouldn't? No. Why not? Because the purpose of eternity is to provide you with a contextual field of timelessness within which to offer you an opportunity for endless experience and limitless variety in the expression of who you are. You would not plant only one flower in your garden. As beautiful as that flower may be, as glorious as may be its fragrance, it is through variety of expression that the creation you call flowers is allowed to fully flower. 
It is your intention to fully know yourself through your experience, not to partially know yourself. To continue to exist with one physical form through all eternity would not serve that purpose. Do not worry, however. Changing forms need not produce an experience of loss. Because... You may return to any particular physical form at any time that you wish. I can come back as who I was before. Yes, and you frequently do. In order to experience that particular expression of you in a new and grander way. This is described in some of your religious traditions as the second coming of Christ. Although many of you have imagined that this can and will happen for only one person. The fact is that each of you may experience yourself as the Christed one. And in fact, all of you have the potential of doing that at any time. You may embrace your sonship at any moment and do so in the moment that you realize who you really are. You will then have fully flowered in the garden of life. This is the garden of paradise of which you have written in your mythologies. Thus do you move through the cycles of life. These cycles are occurring simultaneously for the many individuations that comprise the singularity, which is the one soul. You may move through space-time at several locations, and as I said earlier, you may also move through the same location, down the same time tunnel, more than once. Yes, and you had my head spinning the last time you said this. Now it's spinning again. Okay, I think that words are soon going to be failing us completely. Let's see then if a mental picture might help you to conceptualize what we are talking about. I am about to create a metaphor. This is a metaphor that you may use for the rest of your life. It is important, therefore, to understand that this is not the literal truth. This is a metaphor. This is not how things are. This is a metaphor. Yet metaphors can be extremely useful when how things are cannot be explained easily in words that you will understand or when indeed there are no words for it. Metaphors like parables can help you to comprehend the incomprehensible. That is why all great teachers have used them. So let's call this the marvelous metaphor. Good. Okay. Now.